Good morning and welcome to you all. It's lovely to be here with you to share this great feast of Pentecost. Um, and also, as many of you are, are aware, I'm also celebrating 30 years since I was ordained as a priest. So it's very special to be here this morning. Thank you. Now, as far as I'm aware, there aren't any particular notices or bands for this morning. I'm looking at Jonathan, who hasn't said anything. No? <laughs> it's a service of Holy Communion, and we welcome everybody to come up for communion. Um, we use the common cup again now, but if you're not comfortable with that, feel free only to receive in one kind, just the bread. And if you don't want to receive communion, do come up for a blessing and just keep your, your hands down as we come along. Anyway, we start off with our first hymn, which the words may not be quite so familiar, but you'll recognize the tune. And I've lost my bit of paper, which says which number it is. It's number 93. Come, Holy Spirit, come.
please sit down. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord who has prepared good things for those who love him. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going now to sing a form of the Gloria that comes from Peru. It's number 161 in the hymn books. And the choir will sing the lines that are in ordinary print. And if you join with the dark print, the bold print, and basically what you sing mirrors what the choir is singing. And so we stand to praise God in the Gloria. Thank you.
sit and bow our heads for the collect. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Colin's going to bring us our readings. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And the second reading is from 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. Now, about spiritual gifts. Brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. As we sit, we bow our heads for a prayer. Lord, 
Take my words and speak through them. Take our thoughts and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Birthdays and anniversaries are times when we often look back and we look forwards as well. Pentecost is often described as the birthday of the church as we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit in such power to the disciples. It was a real launch party for the early church. And it was on the 14th of May, the feast of St Matthias, the apostle chosen to replace Judas Iscariot, back in 1994, that I was ordained as a priest along with 12 other women in Blackburn Diocese. And I want to say thank you. Thank you to God and thank you to the many people who've been part of my story before and after that day, not least to the people of the parish of Cumnor. I was born in the Nuffield Maternity Home in Oxford, and my first contact with Cumnor Church was when I was about three months old and I was baptised in the font over there. My parents weren't churchgoers, but we usually did go to church when we visited my grandparents in Nuneaton. And once a year, on Ascension Day, provided it wasn't raining, we would walk over here from come the school for a service. A school friend, Sarah Gawthorne, the Gawthorns lived in Appleton Road, um, invited me to Crusaders in Oxford, and I went for a, a bit. But it was actually a letter from the then vicar, Dennis Goodison, when I was about 16, inviting my brother and me to be confirmed that started regular church attendance here. It was at the University Christian Union that I first encountered students who had committed their lives to Jesus at a very particular time and place. And I started to recognize the many and various ways in which God brings people to faith. After gaining a science degree and a teaching qualification, I started teaching in Guildford. And it's there that I met Anne Donaldson, a young deaconess as she was then, when she came to be curate in our church. And in my experience, clergy were elderly, no disrespect to you, Jonathan, and male. <laughs> so it was an eye-opener to see someone so different working full-time in the church. And as while I was there, I started thinking about whether the, well, it might be an opportunity for me to get involved in full-time church ministry, but whether God could use me in that way. And so via lots and lots of conversations, interviews, a residential selection panel, two years teaching in North London and being part of a church on a high-rise estate, um, more interviews... I went off to Theological College in Bristol in 1988 and was ordained as a deacon and became a curate in Preston in 1991. The men who were ordained deacon alongside me went on to be ordained priest the following year. But it was two years after that, in 1994, that the Church of England ordained the first women as priests. And there were still a lot of people who couldn't accept that, and I do respect their views. The Bishop of Blackburn was amongst them, so he didn't feel able to ordain us and we couldn't be ordained in the cathedral. Um, but we were ordained in two parish churches, half of us by the suffragan Bishop of Lancaster, and the others by a retired bishop. 
and I went on to minister mainly in healthcare chaplaincy in Preston and then in Blackpool. And then in late 2005, I came down to Oxford to be part of the Oxford Hospitals team and moved, first of all, for a few months living with my mother in Cumnor and then got a house in Farmore. And so, in more recent years, I've been acting as a spare wheel in the parish, but it is such a privilege to celebrate Holy Communion. It always felt, as a deacon, you could go so far, but then you needed to get the proper priest, as it were, to bless the bread and wine. That's my story. Each of you will have your own stories, how you have encountered Jesus, what he means to each of you. And one of the wonderful things about the adventure of faith is the diversity. Each one of us is unique. Good thing, really, isn't it? Um, but we each have a unique relationship with God. And so no two stories are going to be the same. But it is the same God the Father who loves us so much, who gave Jesus to die for our forgiveness and who gives the Holy Spirit to be God with us, given to us so that God's work can happen through us. It's the Holy Spirit who enables us to grow in love as we have that personal relationship with Jesus, with God. And as St Paul reminds the, Holy, uh, reminds the Corinthians, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes what we experience is particularly deep and profound. We may feel overwhelmed by love and joy, maybe expressing it through praise and worship, maybe in ecstatic speech known as tongues, or in a silence that just goes beyond words. Sometimes we feel more distant, or God seems more distant. But it doesn't mean that he loves us any the less. Remember, the word for spirit is the same word as wind or breath. Sometimes we can be in a gale. Sometimes the only movement is our breathing, so natural that we scarcely notice it. The Holy Spirit is a gift of God, God himself in us. But he also gives us gifts different gifts to each one of us and different gifts for different times. The disciples at Pentecost received gifts of power, of courage, and above all, communication. They were able to speak the good news of Jesus so that everybody could understand it wherever they were from. The language barriers were broken down. And Peter was able to speak with clarity and conviction. John tells us in his Gospel that on the first Easter evening, Jesus had himself given the Holy Spirit to his disciples. At that point, they needed to know forgiveness, to know that they were forgiven, to know how to forgive each other, and to know how to forgive themselves for their failure to stand by Jesus. And they needed courage and faith to respond to Jesus' command, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. And God sends us too, filled with his presence to be his people, in the world. St Paul, in his letters to the Corinthians, to the Romans, to the Ephesians, and elsewhere, 
lifts many and various spiritual gifts. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, discernment, tongues and their interpretation, helping, administration, hospitality, giving, showing mercy, compassion, teaching, leadership, evangelism, among them. They all have their place both in the building up of the church and in enabling of it to carry out its main function of working to extend God's kingdom. As I look dispassionately at my life, I recognise some of the gifts that God's given me. What gifts has he given to you? Are you able to use them. It's not being vain to be honest about this, although it's often easier to see other people's gifts than it is to recognise our own. But we need people who are wise. We need people who can speak truth to power. We need people with administrative gifts, those who are good at hospitality, at showing compassion, at sharing the good news of Jesus, encouragers, and those with a particular gift of prayer. And maybe there are other gifts that God would like to be able to give you. Paul encourages us to eagerly seek the gifts that God gives. A colleague told the story of two people who died and went to heaven. And when they arrived, they saw a whole series of lockers. And each one found one with their own name on it. Inside the first, there were lots of neatly wrapped parcels. But the other one was empty. And the second man was just a little bit disappointed that his friend had all these parcels waiting for him there, and he seemed to have nothing. But the angel said, those were the gifts that God wanted to give you, but you wouldn't accept them. Whereas you, to the second man, you kept asking and enjoying all God's gifts for you throughout your life. That's why your cupboard is empty. May each of us find empty cupboards. You know that when you love another person, you just want to spend time with them, to be present with them, to enjoy their company, to enjoy mutual giving and receiving. And if that's true of human relationships, how much more is it with God? It is God who gives his Holy Spirit, God who gives the gifts, God who enables the growth. And so for me, for the parish, and for the worldwide church, I want to finish with the words of Dag Hammarskjöld, who was Secretary Gen General of the United Nations in the 1950s and a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. And he wrote, for all that has been, thanks. For all that is to come, yes. Amen. God calls us in many and various ways and so 
We sing now hymn number 560. I see we're already on to the creed. Is the hymn after that or before it on your screen? We are going to sing hymn 560 and then have the creed. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? We'll just hold on a moment and see if we can get it on the screen. If not, books will suddenly miraculously appear, maybe. <laughs> It'd be easier to use hymn books, I think, by the look on. Oh, no, here we go. We have it. We have it. So we stand to sing, Will You Come and Follow Me? Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sit and bow our heads for prayers which Jean and Colin are bringing to us. God of the Church, born at Pentecost, make us powerful in proclamation 
as Peter was powerful that first day when 3,000 people were baptized. As the massive fallout of that day continues, so thousands of people start the Christian journey all over the world. Make us a church here in Cumla Parish where people will find new life and hope. Mighty God, breathe your power into all the activities of St. Michael's, St. Andrew's and St. Mary's. Give power to all who lead services, Bible studies and give any kind of pastoral care. We thank you especially this morning for the 30 years of service given by Jessica. Bless her and give her strength to continue the work she is doing with us all. Give all who are involved with our church wisdom in decision making and the ability to have deep understanding of the way actions taken are in accordance with your will. Creator God, help us to be constantly aware of the world's needs and problems. Give leaders of the world courage to oppose sin and tyranny, that there may be a greater unity among nations, seeking to halt the threat and actions of war and terrorism and that the common good of all humanity be served by their decision and actions. We pray especially this morning for all children orphaned by war, famine and greed. And we ask your blessing, Lord, on our King and Queen Camilla, that the king may continue his recovery from cancer and that she will be blessed with the strength to care for him. We also pray for the Prince and Princess of Wales and their children during this difficult time for them all. <clears throat> Gracious God, we pray for our schools and teachers entering the summer term and examinations. We ask that the students may be calm under pressure and understand that all outcomes will be blessed by you and that failing an exam is not the end of the world. We ask your blessing on all parents with children at school. Help them to be patient even though they have busy lives, and give them understanding to manage all eventualities. Father God, we thank you for the gift of hospitality and all the opportunities we have to share food and fellowship with our families, friends and neighbours. We give thanks today for our families far and wide we remember especially those who are about to be married, those with new babies, and those who are living their golden years. Bless them, guide them, and keep them safe. Merciful God, we pray for the gift of healing to restore those who are injured or suffering. We especially raise before you now those who have asked for healing prayer for themselves or a loved one. Let us in the silence of our hearts pray for all those we know who are sick in mind, body or spirit. Holy God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
you gave us all the wonderful gift of eternal life. Though we mourn their passing, we remember before you those who have died recently, especially Sheila Catterall and Roma Vincent, and those who died long ago but are still missed. <clears throat> Faithful God, as we go out into the world, we pray that this Pentecost may bring our church community a renewed sense of unity with Christians all around the world. May we use the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us to spread the good news and live the gospel of Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers. prayers. For the, For the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. I have a notion that there's an orchestrated interruption happening here before the peace. Jessica has said, it's a very special day, 30 years since her ordination as a priest, which was just this last week, but also we're celebrating today 30 years of women's ministry. Well, not Absolutely. 30 years of women's ministry, so that's completely wrong. We've had women's ministry for 2,000 and odd years. Absolutely. We're celebrating 30 years since the Church of England caught on to the fact and ordained women as priests. <laughs> And uh, I mean, I, we mentioned this to our daughter that it was only 30 years and she said, goodness me, what took them so long? Uh, and I just want to say thank you to you and to all of our other um, female clergy colleagues. Yeah, of which and there say, have been numerous in Cumna. There have, yeah. Years. To say thank you for all that you bring to the church and thank you for bearing with the church for so long when there were so many closed doors. And that's you as well, Jean, of course. So thank you, all of you. Um, Jessica is the one we're particularly celebrating today because it's a nice round number. So we have this cake, uh, which we're going to cut and share with all of us over coffee. So I do hope you'll be able to stay for that. It's a, a very nicely made sponge cake. Oh, can I lovely. hand it to you? Thank you. And can you hold it up so I can take a photo of it? Will it fall off if I hold it like this? Yeah. It'd be a mess if it does. <laughs> It says, thank you, Jessica, for 30 years. <laughs> and thank you for 30 more, hopefully. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you've shared quite a lot of your story in the sermon, and thank you for that. That was wonderful to hear. Um, I mean, was there a sense 30 years ago that you were sort of pioneering as a, as a sort of a, a, a cohort of women priests, that there was a new thing for the church, and you know, what were the sorts of... What was it like? Yes, I mean... There, there was a sense people, particularly women, but not just women, had been lobbying for, for a long time. And I was never one of the militant ones. Um, but there was a sense of, of something new and different. And one of the most lovely things in my ministry, I think, has been when, particularly in the early days, someone would come up to me and say, I really wasn't sure about you christening my baby or... <laughs> you know, doing my nan's funeral, but you're all right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it was just the, the difference. Um, yeah, there was a lot of opposition, particularly in the more conservative, um, small C areas of the country. Um, and, you know, there were those who felt not able to even acknowledge our presence as human beings. Um, let alone as, as ministers, but in general there was a, a wonderful sense of something new, something different, something more complete for the church. Well, I would like to say a big sorry for that, not that I particularly have done it, but I mean, you know, as a male priest here, I think that's been, that's a real shame that you've had to push through that, and thank you for yeah. continuing through it, and I'm, it makes me sad actually to hear those stories. Um, it was what it was. But we are so grateful for the gift that you and uh, all our female clergy are to mm. our church. And you're right, there's a, a much greater sense of completeness yeah. uh, and properness. And then, you know, 
and especially now, obviously, since that, those days 30 years ago, women have now reached the Episcopate as well. Yes. Which has uh, you know, been a, a really welcome change as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Should we give her a big round of applause? <laughs> 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 I was going to say, I hope that's approval rather than disapproval over there. <laughs> anyway, let's stand for the peace. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. If we live by the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And we share with one another a sign of God's peace. Please sit and we bow our heads for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. 
we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you, and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith and with thanksgiving. We pray together, most merciful Lord, 
your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
And so as we've received again God's gifts of love, we pray together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us, may the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your Spirit equip us to serve and worship you, now and always. Amen. And may Christ's holy, healing, enabling Spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, with those you love and those for whom you pray, and those who you struggle to love and struggle to pray for, and remain with you always. Amen. And so our final hymn is the great hymn of thanksgiving, number 354. Now thank we all our God.
let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you as well to all of you. Like, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. How are we doing on time? You've got 15 minutes. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Keep up Lovely the wonderful work. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I won't at the moment, thanks, but I will in a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to talk with a mouth of cake. Although, having said that, seeing Jonathan having it. <laughs> See you. It's on its rounds, it's over there at oh, the right, moment. It's on there. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, you were going to say. <laughs> um, I can't remember what I was going to Oh, I know. Do you know Andrew? Do you remember him? Do you 
Di the our organist? No, right. I don't remember him at all. Andrew? The organist. He, he's been here for 50 years, so <laughs> we celebrated his 50 years last September. I think it was February or something that he started. That's pretty good. But, yeah. He is very good. He is, yeah. yeah. I have to remember not to sing alto in the last <laughs> verses because he was changing the harmonies, which is absolutely <laughs> Go and tell him that, he'll be delighted to invite you to join the choir. Well, I did join in the communion. Yes. I, I know, thank you, that's lovely. I, that. <laughs> I had that as an introit at my service. Right, ago, well, I specifically I asked for it because, you know, it was sung both at the deaconing and the priesting. It's so angry Yeah, yeah, that's right. So totally appropriate. I was agonising over what the choir should sing, actually, because I thought, oh, hell, I've got this special choir, what the hell do I do with them? It was only about the day before, all the bells, and I thought, yes, I do, because <laughs> I wanted an intro, because I thought right. an anthem, yeah. I didn't yeah. know who I was going to have. Yeah. Anyway, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, and okay. Sarah always remembers how you did. You did something with Sarah early on in her Christian journey. Well, fairly early on. I, was in your teens. I, I used to teach the Sunday school almost as soon as I started, but I think that was only when I was sort of between 17 and 18. Um, Liz Davis's daughter, Christine, sort of dragged me down to. We used to have Sunday school in the URC Church Hall yeah. when Tim Pottle was four. <laughs> Okay, so she's about about eight years. So yeah, I mean, you know, when I was being a student and all the rest of it, I was back here at yeah, yeah, for holidays and things. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think they both. I think um, Sheila, who used to be Lloyd, lived next door, but two first, but now Piggott. I went to see her on Tuesday, actually. Yeah, yeah. Flourishing. Yeah, yeah. Ruth is um, a consultant um, specialist GP in um, dermatology. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And um, Bridget lives in France. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Ruth has Alex and Bridget has two as well. And Sheila was widowed about 15, 16 months ago. So, yeah, yeah. But she's still up in the Lake District, so I thought we'd see her. Yes, she is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I haven't heard you must be one of the first ladies to have the dog. 